हेलो गाइज आई डॉक्टर तुषार भाईती वेलकम यू बैक थैंक यू फॉर द लव एंड द रिस्पॉन्स विच आर शोइंग टू माई चैनल फार्मेकोलॉजी मेड इजी सो कीप वॉचिंग माई वीडियोज एंड डोंट फॉरगेट टू सब्सक्राइब द चैनल आफ्टर यू वॉच माई वीडियो ओके सो गाइज वी हैव स्टार्टेड विद ब्रॉन्कोल अस्थमा एंड वी हैव सीन दी ब्रॉन्को डायलेटर सो देर आर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ ब्रॉन्को डायलेटर बिटाटो एगोनिस्ट मिथाइल जेन्थिन्स एंड एंटी कोलिनर्जिक्स सो इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर आई हैव कवर द बिटाटो एगोनिस्ट इन टूडेज लेक्चर्स आई एम गोइंग टू कवर मिथाइल जेन्थिन्स ओके सो मिथाइल जेन्थिन्स दे आर डायरेक्टली एक्टिंग ब्रॉन्को डायलेटर्स विच आर द ड्रग्स इन दिस थियोफाइलिन अमाइनोफाइलिन कोलिन थियोफाइलिनेट हाइड्रोक्सी इथिल थियोफाइलिन डॉक्जोफाइलिन ओके एंड देर इज अनादर ड्रग थियोफाइलिन इथेनोलेट ऑफ पेपराजिन आउट ऑफ विच थियोफाइलिन एंड अमाइनोफाइलिन अलॉन्ग विथ डॉक्जोफाइलिन दिज आर द इम्पॉर्टंट एंड द कॉमनली यूज ड्रग्स फ्रॉम दिस क्लास नाउ दिस थियोफाइलिन दे आर यूजफुल इन बोथ अस्तमा एंड सीओपीडी बट कंसिडरिंग द करंट सिनेरियो बिकॉज ऑफ देअर नैरो मार्जिन ऑफ सेफ्टी लिमिटेड इफिकेसी एंड एवेबिलिटी ऑफ द बेटर ब्रॉन्कोडायलेटर ड्रग्स लाइक बिटाटो एगोनिस्ट एंड एंटीकोलिनर्जिक ड्रग्स द यूज ऑफ थियोफाइलिन एज वेल एज मिथाइल जेन्थिन्स इज कंसिडरेबली डिक्लाइन इन बोथ अस्तमा एंड सीओपीडी बट स्टील दे कैन बी यूज एज अ थर्ड लाइन ड्रग और एडजॉन्ट और एड ऑन थेरपी इन द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ मॉडरेट टू सीवियर अस्तमा सो फर्स्ट वी विल सी देअर मेकेनिजम ऑफ एक्शन देन देअर action on other body systems their pharmacokinetics their drug interactions and uses the theophylline it is one of the three naturally occurring methylated xanthin alkaloid so there are xanthin alkaloid which are present in the beverages like tea coffee or coca okay so tea contains the uh, two of them so we'll see first which are the three the three xanthin alkaloids are caffeine theophylline and theobromine okay now the mechanism of action of theophylline they produces the bronchodilatation but it is a slow and sustained bronchodilatation remember the beta 2 agonist they produces the faster or uh, rapid bronchodilator action and having a short duration of action but these are having a slow bronchodilatation and sustain effect okay so their bronchodilatation is less marked than beta 2 agonist like solvitamol that's why theophylline are not useful in acute attack of asthma but they can be preferred in the moderate to severe chronic asthma okay the first mechanism of action is inhibition of phosphodiesterase enzyme okay so phosphodiesterase enzyme there are various isoforms of phosphodiesterase enzyme out of which phosphodiesterase 3 in mainly present in airway smooth muscle cells while phosphodiesterase 4 is present in the mast cells and these both are inhibited by the theophylline more or less pde4 is uh, inhibited more as compared to the pde3 okay so now the role, what is the role of this phosphodiesterase enzyme you know first the atp is there which is converted by adrenaline cyclase enzyme into cyclic amp okay and this cyclic amp as we have also seen in beta 2 agonist whenever there is an increase in level of cyclic amp bronchodilatation will be produced so that is beneficial for asthma patient but this cyclic amp is broken down into 5 amp by the phosphodiesterase enzyme okay this phosphodiesterase enzyme if we are going to inhibit it we can achieve the increase in level of cyclic amp and that is done by the theophylline so theophylline inhibit the phosphodiesterase enzyme which increases the cyclic amp okay increase in cyclic amp will produce three effects bronchodilatation vasodilatation and cardiac stimulation okay so bronchodilatation will be useful in asthma but vasodilatation it can produce hypotension and reflex tachycardia cardiac stimulation can be deteriorating for certain patient and apart from this increase in cyclic amp also decreases the release of inflammatory mediator from mast cells and they also promote eosinophil apoptosis 
ओके सो प्रोग्राम सेल डेथ दैट इज अपोप्टोसिस सो अपोप्टोसिस ऑफ इओसिनोफिल्स सो इओसिनोफिल्स नंबर्स विल बी डिक्रीज सेकंड मैकेनिज्म ऑफ एक्शन ऑफ मिथाइल एंथीन्स इज ब्लॉकेड ऑफ एडिनोसिन रिसेप्टर एडिनोसिन इज अ मीडिएटर इन वेरियस सिस्टम्स लाइक सीएनएस एंड सीवीएस देयर आर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ रिसेप्टर ए1 ए2 एंड ए3 द ए1 रिसेप्टर दे आर प्रेजेंट इन एयरवे स्मूथ मसल्स एंड दे नॉर्मली प्रोड्यूस द ब्रोंको कॉन्स्ट्रिक्शन by blocking the a1 receptor the theophylline can produce the bronco dilatation so that is another mechanism of bronco dilatation by theophylline a3 receptor of adenosine that are present on mast cells these are also blocked by theophylline because of which there is a decrease in inflammatory mediators like leukotrienes okay so that will contribute to the anti inflammatory action to certain extent but this a1 receptor antagonism is responsible for characteristic side effect of methyl xanthins there are two side effect cardiac arrhythmia and the seizures now why these side effects are produced because adenosine normally depresses the cardiac pacemakers like sa node and it also decreases the conduction through the av node now if we are going to block the adenosine then we are going to increase the conduction through the sa node av node because of which cardiac arrhythmia will uh, occur and second the adenosine acts as a anti seizure endogenous substance so it decreases the chances of seizures but by blocking the a1 receptor we are increasing the chances of seizures so at a high doses theophylline will produce these two characteristic side effect cardiac arrhythmia and the seizures third mechanism of action which is very recently discovered that theophylline at a sub therapeutic doses they stimulate the one enzyme hdac2 that is responsible for histone deacetylation okay so it stimulates the histone deacetylation by stimulating the enzyme hdac2 now what is the role of this hdac2 it is responsible for transcription of pro inflammatory genes the genes which are responsible for increasing the inflammation and responsible for production of nf kappa beta and tnf alpha factors so it suppresses the pro inflammatory gene transcription in short suppresses the nf kappa beta and tnf alpha level and will produce the anti inflammatory effect so theophylline may produce anti inflammatory effect by enhancing the histone deacetylation the fourth mechanism of theophylline which is seen characteristically at a high doses the first and second that seen at a therapeutic doses third can be seen even at a sub therapeutic doses fourth is seen at a, only at a high doses what is that mechanism release of calcium from sarcoplasmic reticulum in the skeletal and cardiac muscles and calcium release will increase the contractility of the uh, muscles especially skeletal and cardiac and it will enhances the diaphragmatic contractility and can be responsible for producing the relief in a patient from dyspnea or breathlessness But Now, what is the action of theophylline or methyl xanthins on other body systems? Okay, and these actions on other body system, in short, they are also responsible for their adverse effect. Okay, now theophylines, these are the drugs which have a very narrow margin of safety, or also called as a low therapeutic index. Now, you know, in general pharmacology, therapeutic index is an indicator of safety of a drug. If the therapeutic index is low, means safety is low. so these have these are drug we have a very less safety why because when their concentration is between 5 to 15 microgram per ml they are safe but as the concentration in the plasma increases above 15 microgram per ml especially above the 20 microgram per ml their side effects may appear and at a 30 to 35 microgram per ml their toxicity can appear so this and other body systems on which theophylline are acting they are mainly cns cvs and gat that's why their side effects are also limited to these three systems cns cvs and gat in cns normally they are the stimulants you know caffeine we are taking the coffee for stimulation okay to increase the concentration theophylline is also cns stimulant but sometimes it may also be responsible for side effect like nervousness restlessness इंसोमिया नींद नहीं आती के कॉफी लेने के बाद और एंड हेडेक ओके हेडेक में भी बिकॉज ऑफ वैजो डायलिटेशन ऑल्सो एज इट इज इंक्रीजिंग द साइकिल बट एट अ हाई डोसेस इट मे बी रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर ट्रेमर डेलिरियम एंड सीजर्स 
okay and seizures we know that is partly responsible for the because of a1 antagonism adenosine a1 receptor antagonist that's why chances of seizures are increased at a high basis okay so tremor delirium and seizures in the cvs generally they causes the vasodilatation because of increasing cyclic amp vasodilatation will cause the fall in the blood pressure and that can give rise to the reflex tachycardia or in the patient language palpitation means increase in heart rate okay so that is a one of the side effect but at a very high doses this theophylline and methyl xanthines can cause cardiac arrhythmia and the reason again because of a1 antagonism so adenosine is useful as a anti arrhythmic drug so if we are going to antagonize or block the adenosine receptor we are producing the chances of arrhythmias that's why cardiac arrhythmia is one of the side effect of theophylline or methyl xanthines next system is a gid or gastrointestinal tract in that theophylline can produce nausea then vomiting and this vomiting can be because of two reasons one is a gastric irritation because this theophylline increases the acid and pepsin secretion in the stomach which will increase the gastric irritation can give rise to the vomiting second this theophylline can also stimulate the ctz that is a chemo receptor trigger zone which is located in the brain but outside the blood brain barrier so by stimulating the ctz they can be responsible for vomiting and next is a dyspepsia so these are the characteristic adverse effect of the theophylline apart from them they are the mild diuretic by because they inhibit the tubular reabsorption of sodium and the water now coming to the pharmacokinetics of theophylline theophylline and doxophylline because they are poorly water soluble they should be given only by oral route and should not be given by intramuscular or iv route next drug is aminophylline this was previously very commonly used for status asthmaticus but now it is mostly outdated so it should be given by slow iv infusion over 20 minutes because of its water soluble nature it can be given by iv route but it should be given by slow over 20 minutes otherwise fast injection can give rise to the arrhythmia but it should not be given by intramuscular or another subcutaneous route third is a hydroxy ethyl theophylline that is a etophylline remember these are the salts which contains the theophylline along with some other substances so etophylline plus theophylline so this should be given by the intramuscular or iv route now theophylline and methyl xanthines they are metabolized in the liver by cytochrome enzymes cyp1a2 and that is responsible for drug interaction so we'll see that children they eliminate the theophylline very faster because the metabolism in the children is faster as compared to adults that's why children require the higher doses of theophylline as compared to adults while elderly patients more than 60 years neonates and premature infants as their liver capacity is immature they metabolize the theophylline slowly so they require the lower doses of theophylline as compared to adults okay now very important thing on which mcqs can be asked that the kinetics of methyl xanthines it changes from first order to zero order over the therapeutic range okay i will take a separate lecture on this first order kinetics and zero order so a dose reduction is required in certain sub types of patients where age is more than 60 years then chf then pneumonia and liver failure so age more than 60 years congestive heart failure because they are stimulating the cardiac systems and already the heart is weak in the congestive heart failure so dose reduction is required in pneumonia patient and in liver failure as they are metabolized by the liver in the liver failure patients we have to decrease the dose of the theophylline next coming interactions of theophylline there are two types of interactions first is the agents which enhances the metabolism of theophylline they are also called as the enzyme inducers so inducing the cyp1a2 what happens this enzyme inducers will stimulate the cyp1a2 or uh, induces the enzyme because of which theophylline is metabolized very fastly and its plasma concentration falls and it may not produce the th enough therapeutic effect so in such a cases we have to increase the dose of theophylline or we have to stop the enzyme inducers okay so which are the enzyme inducers which can increase the metabolism first is a smoking 
then phenytoin phenobarbital and rifampicin so these are the enzyme inducers on this topic mcqs are very likely to be asked second agents which inhibit the metabolism so these inhibit the cyp1 a2 because of which metabolism of theophylline will not occur so its concentration in the plasma will increase and it can give rise to the side effects or toxicity so these are the enzyme inhibitors so the, which are the drugs which are enzyme inhibitors ciprofloxacin erythromycin allopurinol and cimetidine so when these drugs are given along with theophylline we have to decrease the dose of theophylline remember in case of enzyme inducers we have to increase the dose of theophylline when we are giving the theophylline with enzyme inhibitors we have to decrease the dose of theophylline and the last is the uses of theophylline so we have seen it is useful in the asthma as well as copd because of its bronchodilatation effect and we have seen various mechanism second it can decreases the mediator release from the mast cells and various other inflammatory cells then it can also stimulates the respiratory drive it can enhances the diaphragmatic contractility and it promote the eosinophil apoptosis but because of narrow margin of safety as we have seen in the side effect and low therapeutic index theophylline use has been considerably declined and it is useful only as a third line drug as or as a add on or adjunct therapy in moderate to severe asthma patient okay third line drug after the inhalational corticosteroid and long acting beta 2 agonist then sustain release theophylline yes this is a newer preparation theophylline if we are giving in a immediate release tablet it can achieve the high peak of concentration which can be responsible for side effect that's why mostly we give the sustain release tablets of theophylline so that it can be released very slowly also called as a cr tablet that is a controlled release tablet so they can give rise to the protection or bronchodilatation for more than 8 hours and that's why they are preferred mainly in the nocturnal asthma most of the time the patients of asthma they have the episodes of asthma or breathlessness in the night or in the early morning so we can give the theophylline tablet in the night so as to give the protection from nocturnal asthma and second use of methylxanthines is apnea in premature infant so apnea is nothing but the difficulty in the breathing or dyspnea so in premature infants as the surfactant is less they can suffer from apnea so by enhancing the diaphragmatic contractility by releasing the calcium theophylline can reduce the duration and the frequency of severe episodes of the asthma so uh, apnea so that's about uh, the methylxanthines so if you have liked the video please subscribe to the channel thank you